Hukrumi Media's Polity Amtabi Madiba, academic researcher Dr. Sam Human, joins me to unpack her book titled The Most Evil of Them All When Narcissism Turns Deadly. So your book explores the role of narcissistic personality disorder through the lived experiences of various serial murders and showcases the profiles of lesser known serial offenders from South Africa and around the world. So can you tell us more about the role of pathological narcissism and the narcissistic personality disorder in the making of a serial killer? Well, the book, um, the reason that I, I wrote the book was I came across a, um, a legal case in the United Kingdom where there was a young man who very sadly murdered his parents um, and then took his father's credit cards and went off on an international overseas holiday with his girlfriend for six weeks, unbeknown to the girlfriend what had actually transpired. Um, and on his return from his expensive holiday using his parents' cards, and his, his actually his parents lay dead in their home while he was away just cavorting around. And when he returned, he denied any knowledge of, of his parents' whereabouts or anything to police. Anyway, eventually, long story short, he was arrested for the murder of his parents. And he was diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Um, and based on that diagnosis, he was given a much lesser sentence he was not given a full life term sentence he was deemed to be mentally unfit and um, he was actually given a reduced sentence based on that which led me to think that the issue of narcissism where we you know uh, extreme pathological narcissism it seems to have potentially played a role in the way he not only killed his parents but the way in which he was sentenced and it set a whole new legal precedent in the UK around personality disorders and their role in serial murder. And it got me thinking about how many other serial murders um, and serial offenders, both locally and obviously internationally, have potentially been misdiagnosed or where the role of narcissism has been underplayed, where they've been too quick to be diagnosed as sociopaths, psychopaths, uh, schizophrenics and yet the role of narcissism may equally have played some kind of role and it was worth investigating so that was what got me thinking about how when we look at individuals like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Cedric Marque here in South Africa when you start to really look into the nature of their behavior the nature of their crimes what roles they played Yes, they could well have been sociopaths, psychopaths, all sorts of other mental issues, you know, taking place. But I felt that potentially the role of extreme narcissism could also have played a role and potentially narcissistic personality disorder could, could well have been part of their behavior patterns. So I just, I wrote the book with a, a new lens, a new angle at which to observe the underlying behavioral patterns and causes for what they did. And um, it wasn't to say that I was re-diagnosing anyone. It was just to say, well, if we went back and redid Cedric Marquez's court case and reassessed him, considering narcissistic personality disorder, would he potentially also have been diagnosed with that infliction? Um, so that was what the book was about, just to sort of look at serial murder through a new lens of narcissism. And talking about sociopaths and psychopaths, can you tell us the difference between the two, as you mentioned, that they share certain traits? Yes, sociopaths, psychopaths, and extreme narcissists share some traits. They have distinct traits, but they also share similar traits, particularly a lack of empathy and a lack of remorse for what they do. So all three have that in common. Sociopaths tend to be quite opportunistic, spur-of-the-moment individuals. They are not very organized individuals in terms of their mental capacity. They suffer from a sense of entitlement and a, a sense of rage as well. But their crimes are often opportunistic, not very well thought through. They tend to do things on the spur of the moment. If they're suddenly very angry or very upset, they will act out on that behavior. Um, whereas psychopaths are a lot more calculating, premeditated. They tend to move in our social circles very camouflaged. You wouldn't necessarily know you were talking to a psychopath because they have the mental capacity and intelligence 
to camouflage themselves very well. And yet all the time they're pre-calculating, premeditating what it is that they're going to do. And their crimes are typically more planned, um, more organized. Whereas the sociopath suffering from the same internal angers and rages, their, their crimes tend to be a little bit more opportunistic. They're not as well controlled um, as your psychopath. But in terms of the narcissist, they all share that sense of entitlement, that lack of empathy, that lack of remorse for what they do. And tell us about how Krukastor Kalkila Cecilia Stein played the narcissistic card to perfection, exploiting both her friendship with Ria Grunewald and her Electus Per Day's followers to serve her needs. Well, I think she decided that she never really wanted to hold down a permanent job. She never really wanted to, you know, carry on and conduct her life like the average individual does. We we get up every morning, we go to work, we take on responsibilities and challenges. Um, she felt that she was above all of that, that she didn't need to live an ordinary life. And I think she found a way through religious means to work that angle of being somebody superior, somebody special. So she declared herself as an ancient witch that held all the powers of Satan and that she had been chosen by Satan to be Satan's bride. And she worked the vulnerabilities and the naiveties of many of those people in her community who were very religious individuals and believed very strongly, you know, in heaven and hell and God and Satan. And she used her power of superiority and a sense of entitlement to be above everybody else in her congregation and came across as this individual who was a bride of Satan, who needed help, who needed saving, and that all her minions would be able to not only pray for her salvation, but actually go around and doing things for her to help save her from Satan himself. Um, and she couldn't get... Uh, Ria Grunewald, eventually Ria sort of saw through her and felt that she just could no longer deal with Cecilia. So Cecilia started her own church. And instead of following a path of genuine religious belief and religious faith and religious practice, she used this church to get her followers to do things for her so that she could earn an income, so she could make money. So this involved murdering people, stealing their credit cards, their money, going to the ATM and literally withdrawing funds and then using that money to live and to profit. And every time they ran out of money, she got her followers to murder more people in the name of saving her from Satan. So very manipulative, evil. Um, and in that sense, that sense of entitlement, that sense of manipulation, and that complete lack of remorse does speak to a, a pathological narcissistic personality. In addition to potentially other things, as I say, she has been diagnosed with with other issues, but I believe somewhere in there, there is a role that pathological narcissism played in her behavior. And as you, as you just mentioned, that psychologist explained that in the absence of remorse or any emotion after a terrible act of violence, such behavior should be classified at the extreme pathological end of the narcissistic spectrum. So can you tell us more about the antisocial personality disorder who is at risk of developing it, and what are the effects of it? Well, antisocial personality disorder is the name given to sociopaths. There is the International Diagnostic Manual for Mental Disorders. It's an international standard that all psychologists and psychiatrists globally use as a classification tool. It is a it is an actual manual, a book. It's known as the DSM-5, and within there, various mental conditions are classified along psychiatric terms. The diagnostic manual has a section on personality disorders, and within that falls things like antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality, narcissistic personality, etc. The disorders of those personalities and antisocial personality disorder is the, the the new official name for a sociopath. So that is what antisocial personality disorder is. Those at risk for antisocial personality disorder is varied. I mean, you know, there's the whole nurture nature debate. Is it a genetic disposition? Does one grow up in a certain environment and then develop? Um, there are many causes for antisocial personality disorder. And tell us why men with traits of sexual narcissism are more likely to commit violent or vindictive sex acts. 
Well, that speaks to, you know, sexual narcissism is a element of pathological narcissism. Um, not all individuals with narcissistic personality disorder are going to enter a world of crime. Not all individuals with narcissistic personality disorder are dangerous or pathological. The book speaks to those that very, very small percentage of individuals who harbor a narcissistic personality disorder who have potentially gone down a dangerous path. So I just want to stress that not all individuals with narcissistic personality disorder become pathologically dangerous, but there is potential for that. And within that, there is potential to display um, sexual narcissism as well, which really just speaks to an extension of the general pathological narcissistic behavior, which is an extreme form of sexual abuse, uh, sexual entitlement, you know, that individual who just feels that, that that it's absolutely, he's absolutely, he or she is absolutely entitled to rape another individual for sexual satisfaction. And that it's not something that they need to show remorse for, that they're entitled to do it, um, and that they just take what they want in terms of satisfying themselves sexually. So sexual narcissism just speaks to a, a branch of sexual behavior uh, within those individuals harboring a, a narcissist, an extreme narcissistic personality disorder. And if left unchecked, what are the implications of narcissism? Well, as you rightly explained, there is that spectrum. I think we all have a certain amount of narcissism in our general personalities because without it, you know, narcissism also speaks to a, a, a sort of a healthy kind of narcissism on that spectrum where we have a, a certain amount of healthy self-confidence, self-promotion in this day and age with social media and um, the various challenges and, and the competition in life. We all need a little bit of self-esteem and a little bit of positive confidence to move forward and navigate the challenges of life. So a certain amount of healthy narcissism is in fact necessary and it sits on that spectrum. But when that narcissistic traits start to become all-consuming and one behaves with extreme self-confidence, an inflated sense of self-worth, an inflated sense of self-importance, that they believe they're more important and more superior than others, then we start going from healthy narcissism to negative, not-so-healthy narcissism. And then on that extreme sense, there is that very small percentage of individuals where that sense of self-entitlement self-importance and superiority becomes so extreme and so heightened that they believe that they are entitled to behave in any way they please and where they harbor a, a sense of rage a sense of anger within that rage can then be expressed in a way of just actually taking someone's life or as you say raping somebody and thinking it's perfectly their their entitlement to do so so those are the implications of an unchecked sense of narcissism when it starts going down that path and starts to become an actual personality disorder, which is not then treated or addressed. Um, and a very small percentage of those individuals can potentially become dangerous. And lastly, Sam, what are you hoping to achieve with this book? The book is really just to raise awareness of narcissistic personality disorder. It was only really officially diagnosed as a disorder in the 1980s. And although 1980 sounds like a long time ago, in the world of psychological therapy, it has a very short history. So it's a relatively new disorder that's been officially, officially claimed and classified. But I believe it's a disorder that is overlooked. You know, we bandy the word narcissism around quite easily. But within that label of narcissism, there is this element where narcissism can turn into an actual personality disorder. And it is a disorder that, if unrecognized and unchecked, it can lead to extreme misery for those people living around those individuals. And as I say, for a very small percentage can actually lead to a danger and, 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 and fatality. So the book really is just to raise awareness, just to get people thinking, and just to make people aware of this issue known as narcissistic personality and specifically this issue of narcissistic rage how if unchecked and untapped narcissistic rage can become dangerous that was dr sam human speaking to criminal media's polity about the most evil of them all when narcissism turns deadly